And a very good evening to you. How you doing? It's Thursday, 13th of June, 2019. Ordinarily, you'd be hearing the news right now. But everything that could go wrong has gone wrong this particular week. Can't download the news for you. So, well, we'll just have to forego the news at the top of the hour. We'll survive without it, I suppose. Welcome to uh, Thursday's Richie Allen Show. Broadcasting live right now on Fab Radio 2 here in Manchester, TriggerWarning.tv, my own website, RichieAllen.co.uk, and of course, TuneIn Radio as well. I've got a very interesting and sometimes amusing news roundup for you over the course of the next hour. I was going to do a phone in program today, but it's not possible, and I'll tell you why in a couple of seconds' time. Thank you for joining me. It's actually nice to sit down and have a chat with you. Asking the questions mainstream journalists will never ask. This is your Richie Allen Show on RichieAllen.co.uk, Fab Radio 2 in Manchester, and TriggerWarning.tv. It's the Richie Allen Show. Broadcasting live on RichieAllen.co.uk and multiple platforms around the world. And now, here's your host, Richie Allen. Welcome to the program. Twitter is where you can speak to me. You can chat to me directly by tweeting at Richie Allen Show. I know you will, and I look forward to hearing from you this afternoon. My name is Richie Allen. I'm going to be looking over the big news stories of the day and giving you maybe a different perspective on some of those stories. And that's about the size of it today. Yeah, we get rid of the old theme tune there. Some mad week this has been, you know. I've not got any upload speed, excuse me, download speed whatsoever here at Richie Allen Show Towers. I've got nothing really. Less than a meg, meaning that I couldn't throw the Skype line open to your good self because we wouldn't have been able to have a conversation. All of this is going to be dealt with on Saturday morning, which is lovely, meaning we're kind of back to normal next week but next week brings with it its own problems because the ground floor of our new house is going to have asphalt put down it's then going to have screed put down and it's then going to have a floor put down what did you do richie did you take a house that was basically a pile of bricks no (laughs) not at all the house is lovely and it's 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 terrific and it's great and we're settling into it but before we before we committed, we knew that there was a problem with the floor, that it wasn't level and it had to be dealt with because of something called magnesite, which was on the ground level of all of these old houses over a hundred years ago. And it's an issue. So it's going to be dealt with next week and everything will be hunky-dory. But in the meantime, I'm like that man that you see sometimes in cartoons who's sitting around and He looks like he's taking it all really well and he's calm and people who know me as a volatile, confrontational guy will be like, Jesus, Richie's really calm going through all of this. (laughs) I can't believe that he's not blowing his top yet, like. He's just sitting there and getting on with it. Yeah. You'll be reading about me next Wednesday in the Telegraph newspaper. Bald Irish man goes on rampage through Salford and Eccles with a chainsaw. <laughs> Doesn't kill anybody, just starts, I don't know, attacking local landmarks with chainsaw. I'm just going to lose it. I really am. I'm sitting here now and even talking about it is actually calming me down. I'm getting more mature. When I was younger, I had less patience than I do now. But anyway, by the end of next week, We should be hunky-dory. And I'm pretty sure that the flooring madness of next week, and it is a major job, isn't going to affect the programme. I think I'll still be able to do the programme. I'm pretty sure anyway. The live streams in the morning in the newspapers, pretty much guaranteed. And the radio show in the afternoons, I think, should be okay too. The live stream in the AM, got to keep mentioning this, because it is pretty new to people. Every weekday morning at 9.30, I sit down in front of my laptop and I look through the day's newspapers, okay? And that's going to be an ongoing thing and it's a bit of fun too. 
So we can do that every, you can do that with me every Monday to Friday at 9.30am. Please do. It's good crack. The previous episodes are all on YouTube now and it's nice and interactive too. I think people like that. They like the fact that they're watching somebody and they can talk to them and have their comments read out as well. So there you are. So it's all fun and games. So yeah, so there's no point in me trying to do an interview with a guest today and I certainly couldn't open the Skype to you because I've less than one meg speed and yet I've got 20 meg upload speed. I know there are techies amongst my audience so you know that means I can upload for fun but it's no good. Brand new provider and it's a very famous one with a dedicated line arriving on Saturday morning and my download speed problems will be in the past. Touch wood. All right. All right. Weather is miserable. Looking out there. Looking out there at Salford. At Salford. It's a dirty old town. It's a dirty old town today. It's very miserable today. So anyway. So it's a shame I didn't do the phone-in. Would have loved to have a chat with you today. But I'll make it up to you and I will do one next week. That's a promise. In fact, we'll do a two-hour one next week. And you can come on. And maybe one or two Zionists might ring up as well. Might have the courage. Maybe they're test the clay. Test the clay is a sophisticated way of saying testicles. Maybe their test the clay will drop in time. Maybe their bum fluff will fall off their faces and they'll grow a beard like a real man. <laughs> and come on and talk with me. Now here's a very important story. Let's get into it. Let's stop with the silliness. Very serious story. Talked about this this morning on the face on the YouTube live stream. Dozens of crew members were rescued after abandoning two oil tankers which were hit by explosions in the Gulf of Oman. Iran has rescued most of the crew members on board the Kokuka Courageous and the Front Altair. These are the two tankers. The Kokuka Courageous and the Front Altair. The US Navy is saying... Well, we rescued some of them. And this is interesting because when this story broke earlier on today, the news networks pointed the finger at Iran. Because they was blamed. Oh, they was framed. Blamed, blamed, blamed. They blamed Iran. Singing is getting to be a bit common now, isn't it? Needs, needs to stop. They blamed Iran this morning, but it turns out Iran rescued most of these guys. Now, the cause of the blasts remains unclear. This is one of the world's busiest oil routes, by the way, the Gulf of Oman. Bet you didn't know that. Bet you you didn't either, Richie. No, I had to look it up, to be honest. Somebody is trying to destabilise relations between Iran and the international community, said Iran. An Iranian official told the BBC, We've no connection with this incident. Somebody or something is trying to destabilise relations between us and the international community. No surprises that oil prices rose as much as 4.5% from a five-month low. So oil prices have gone up. This is according to Bloomberg. No group or country has yet claimed responsibility for the incident today. And don't forget, this comes only one month after four oil attack. Uh, excuse me. What happened today is only one month after four oil tankers were attacked off the United, United Arab Emirates. Now back a month ago, when those four tankers were attacked off the coast of the UAE, Iran was blamed then with no proof. Now today we have another attack, allegedly. The finger is being pointed at Iran from Tel Aviv and from Washington. Iran says, it ain't us. Wait till you hear Sky News reporter, their diplomatic editor, Dominic Waghorn. I mean it, dear listener. You're not going to believe. You're not going to believe it. You won't believe your ears. Dominic Waghorn is a Rupert Murdoch employee at Sky News. Wait until you hear what he says about today's attack on the two tankers. It comes just a few weeks after what happened, um, slightly uh, different part of the uh, the Gulf of the uh, UAE waters where four other tankers were attacked with limpet mines then. 
Now, it's a big who done it, what, who attacked these tankers and the tankers back then. Um, it's either, I think, two sort of competing theories. Either it's a false flag attack, which means um, it was an attack by an enemy of Iran, making it look like Iran, because Iran is being blamed and is seen as the most likely culprit. False flag! On Sky News! A Sky News editor said false flag! I can't believe it. Did you hear that, Tom? A Sky News guy saying it might be a false flag. Tom, did you hear that? No. Could you repeat it? Because I, I can't believe my fucking ears. Okay. Okay, here it is. Either it's a false flag attack, which means um, it was an attack <laughs> by an enemy of Iran, making it look like Iran, because Iran is being blamed and is seen as the most likely culprit. Yes! What kind of fuckery is Oh my god, Dominic Waghorn has either had a stroke or has been told that he's only got three months to live. I hope that's not the case, by the way. I'm sure it isn't. And he's grown a conscience. Is that the first time that a reporter on Sky or the BBC has said it might be a false flag that one of Iran's enemies might be trying to frame Iran? I couldn't believe my effing ears. My effing ears nearly fell off to the effing ground. And I played it back again and again and again. It, it's beautiful. It's almost orgasmic. Let's hear it. Either it's a false flag attack, which means um, it was an attack by an enemy of Iran, making it look like Iran, because Iran is being blamed and is seen as the most likely culprit. I'm sexually aroused, Dominic. I'm actually sexually aroused. <laughs> this is good stuff. Tell us more, Dom. Tell us more. Iran has plenty of enemies, the Saudis, the, the, the Emiratis, the Israelis. You know, it's possible that these countries launched an attack to make it look like Iran did it, to increase tensions between Iran and America, which it's already very strange. Conspiracy theory, that, isn't it? Well, it is, you know, and it's a, it's a part of the world that is full of conspiracy theories. Or is it Iran itself? Uh, the uh, Iranian foreign minister has pointed out this morning that the Japanese leader, Shinzo Abe, was meeting with the supreme leader today. One of these tankers was containing uh, Japanese cargo or cargo headed for Japan and was owned, is owned by a Japanese company. So he's saying that this is uh, very suspicious. Suspicious doesn't begin to describe what likely transpired this morning. So the Iranians are claiming this was a, that effectively they're being framed. Others are saying Iran has recently threatened to close this stretch of water because what it's saying is if it can't ship its oil, the Americans have increased sanctions, um, making it much harder for the Iranians to sell their oil to any other countries. They're saying if they can't export their oil because of these sanctions, then they could close the, this stretch of water to stop other people exporting oil through it as well. So having made that threat, the, uh, obviously the, the suspicion is very much on Iran. The Iranians, of course, denying it. At the moment, we don't know who's behind it. But because this is now becoming kind of series in attacks, as you say, the concern is it could escalate, close that stretch of water, or possibly lead to military confrontation between the Iranians and the Americans. Yes, that's, of course, the sobering reality, that it might lead to a confrontation between Iran and the United States. We know that's exactly what Israel wants. The great Satan, Israel, not the United States. Iran has referred in the past to the US as the great Satan, but it is Israel. Not the people of Israel, or the people of Palestine, I should say, but the the governments and the military people there, Zionists, are behind it. So Waghorn pre presented there a thoroughly, a thoroughly objective report about these attacks in the Straits of Hormuz, and, or the Strait of Hormuz and the Gulf of Oman. Thoroughly objective, even throwing in the possibility that it might be a false flag. And I see that some of you, my dear listeners, are quite surprised by that as well. <laughs> yeah, I was too. Wasn't expecting it. I was beavering away in studio, in studio, beavering away. And then I heard false flag and Oh, well, the old ears pricked up, so they did. Wow. Of course, I don't believe Iran is attacking tankers. Whatever you might think of Iran, it has a, well, it has a, how would you say? It has a difficult human rights record. There's no two ways about that. I don't think any worse or any better than any other country in the region. And I think the, Iran the Israeli 
human rights record makes the Iranians look like Cinderella and Snow White. Let's be honest about it. My pal Patricia says, false flag framing Iran. I wish I could say I'm shocked. Sometimes a situation is so obvious that even the biggest deniers can't deny it. I bet you're shocked though, Patricia, to hear a Sky News reporter throw into the mix the possibility that somebody is trying to frame the Iranians. Hi to Moinga, hi to Dean Smith, hi to Gail, how you doing? All of you to Martin in Spain, to Charlotte in Burnley, hi to Charlotte, to Patrick and to Susan and if I keep scrolling down to Murray and Jason as well. Jason tweets, uh, Richie, it's strange how when the price of oil is falling and there's no need for those petrodollars, then there's some kind of attack. Go back a couple of years when oil was down to $25 a barrel and the Alberta oil refineries went up in flames as did some Nigerian pipelines. You are a smart dude, Jason. That's very well observed, my friend. It's certainly worth considering that. Hi to Kelly in Ireland. Diagwit Kelly. Connors to to. Hope you're well. Right, we'll move on, shall we? Shall we move on? <laughs> yeah. Sexually aroused. Listening to Dominic Waghorn. Never thought the day would come when a male voice would turn me on. But I was certainly turned on by that. Right, it's uh, seven, 16 and a half minutes past the hour. Let's talk a bit more about Joe Brand, the comedian, whom I like. Always found Joe Brand very funny. And Theresa May, or Theresa May. You're not supposed to pronounce the T-H when you say Theresa May, for whatever reasons. Bizarre, really. It's Theresa. The Prime Minister, for another short while, has called on the BBC to tell her why a joke made by Joe Brand about throwing battery acid was broadcast on the radio. So Theresa May has intervened. Joe Brand has been accused of inciting violence after making the comment on Victoria Corrin Mitchell's Radio 4 show, which is called Heresy. Okay? And on the programme Heresy, they were talking about recent protests where milkshakes were chucked at right-wing politicians. So the BBC has defended the comedian, the comedian, following the backlash, saying panellists are often deliberately provocative, but not intended to be taken seriously. In case you didn't hear the actual clip from the show Heresy, this is what Joe Brand actually said. I'm kind of thinking, why bother with a milkshake when you could get some battery acid? <laughs> It's just me, and I, it's all right. I, I'm not going to do it. It's purely a fantasy, but I think milkshakes are pathetic. I honestly do. Mm, that was the clip. And now Theresa May has stepped into the argument. Her spokesman said the Prime Minister has consistently said politicians should be able to campaign without harassment, intimidation and abuse. It's for the BBC to explain why it was appropriate content to broadcast. Nigel Farage, the leader of the Brexit party, weighed in. He was uh, doused in milkshake, wasn't he, in Newcastle last month. He accused Joe Brand of inciting violence. Farage did. And Farage actually asked the police to look at it. While people on social media have compared the BBC's response to Joe Brand with their response to Danny Baker. Baker was sacked over an alleged racist tweet about the royal child. You'll remember that. Joe Brand was doorstepped by reporters earlier. This is important. This is not mainstream news. There's a very important issue here that we've discussed many times. So Joe Brand was doorstepped by reporters earlier. If they want an answer, there have been plenty of explanations by the BBC and Victoria Corrin as well. Did you have anything to say to Nigel Farage? Uh, no. Are you going to carry on working with the BBC? Well, I don't know what you mean about that, because well, no, I'm not employed by the BBC, so okay. how can they sack me? Yes, yeah, very good. Jo is not, of course, employed by the BBC. She is a regular appearer on the BBC, but she's self-employed as a comic and as an actress and would be paid per appearance, no doubt. Right, 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 right. What do, what do we think about this? What do we think? I don't think for a minute that Joe Brand, nor even the hated BBC... It pains me to say. Should have to explain or apologise for those comments on this programme called Heresy. She's a comic. She's a comedian. 
And apparently this programme, which I haven't heard, is a take no prisoner style talk show. It's a panel show. We're sick of panel shows, aren't we? There must be a thousand of them now. And guests on the show try to commit heresy by challenging people's opinions on any subject in front of a kind of raucous studio audience. So it's provocative by design. She said it was a fantasy, that she wouldn't do it. How could anybody make a credible argument that Joe Brand was advocating throwing battery acid? Or worse again, that she was trying to incite it? It's um, preposterous, isn't it? And you've got to apply common law to this. Any judge worth his or her salt would laugh at the notion that she was willing some sort of serious injury for Nigel Farage or anybody else. And these are scary times. When politicians like the mass-murdering psychotic Theresa May can demand that somebody be sanctioned for a comment and then say that politicians should be allowed to do their jobs free from harassment. That is sick. What's happening in Yemen, Yemen at the moment is a genocide. And Theresa May is an accessory to it. And she's talking about sanctioning a comedian who made an off-colour remark in a controversial panel show. And by the way, the comparison with Danny Baker. Well, that's of course where the BBC has made a rod for its own back because the sacking of Danny Baker was shocking over the picture he tweeted of the well-dressed couple walking the chimpanzee who's wearing a three-piece suit. And he did that the minute it was announced that baby, that the royal baby was born. And at the time of the tweet, Baker wasn't aware of or he wasn't thinking about Meghan Markle's mixed-race background. And I will argue this forever, because Baker is so bright. If he was conscious of Markle's ethnicity at that very moment, he'd have never tweeted it, because he's not stupid. Therefore, you can conclude it was an unfortunate mistake, and they fired him because the mob demanded it. The BBC has made a rod for its own back now, because now the mob are demanding the sanctioning in terms of not using her anymore, the dismissal of Joe Brand, who is a comic employed on a show where the panellists are urged to shock the audience. Not just the studio audience, but the audience at home. Sky News had Tom Walker on. You know Tom Walker, of course, as Jonathan Pye. And they had David Vance on. David appears on this programme sometimes from Alt News Media. Here's David Vance, first of all. For the last several years, we've been bombarded by um, the media and politicians in, insisting that we've got to watch our language. You know, we mustn't use um, uh, um, hate speech. We mustn't use violent language. And then up pops um, Joe Brand in the BBC, suggesting it might be a hoot if someone got some battery acid in their face. That's OK, is it? No, it's not. It's a patent double standard. And that's really, Jonathan, my beef with this. I believe in free speech. I believe people, sh comedians, should be allowed to say what they want. But this was broadcast in the BBC. And the BBC has a very clear hypocritical double standard here insofar as it allows Joe Brand to do this. But not that long ago, it dismissed Danny, Maker, Danny Baker for making uh, a somewhat perhaps uh, offensive but nonetheless or distasteful um, visual joke. So, you know, you've got to ask yourself, Jonathan, where is the um, where's the consistency here yeah, by David, the BBC? David. That's a very good point he's making there, of course. OK, where's the consistency? What's good for one should be good for another. Good point. David, wasn't the whole point of this uh, radio show that it's poking fun at exactly what you're talking about, this toxic debate that has happened over Brexit? This programme, the whole point of it is to poke fun at that. Well, the, the thing is that the, the, the BBC in particular uh, is very keen to lecture people from other political perspectives. Um, and, uh, and, you know, when it comes to be one of their own, and let's face it, Joe Brand has been on the BBC for a very long time, then it seems to have a double standard. And another quick point, if I may say, it was Joe Brand who, uh, in, a pre in some years gone past, got uh, Carol Thatcher sacked from a BBC programme over a comment that she heard Carol Thatcher say. So, you know, if it's all about free speech, then Joe, uh, Joe Brand is an absolute 
hypocrite and we shouldn't make excuses for her and Nigel Farage is absolutely right to demand that she be investigated for incitement because that's frankly what it is. Yeah and that's not what he really means he didn't do himself any favours there David Vance at the end he was basically um, surmising that if it's okay for Brand to have Carol Thatcher fired if it's okay for Baker to be fired well then it's now okay to go after Joe Brand and Farage is therefore right to suggest the police get involved and look at incitement. I don't think David Vance would want Joe Brand to be harassed by the police for incitement. I'm not sure anyway. So there you go. I don't believe, you know, but anyway. So Tom Walker, whose alter ego is Jonathan Poy, he's a comedian and he's funny is Tom Walker. What does he think? Uh, I find it extraordinary in this day and age that we're debating this, right? There are two things you need to look at. Context and intent. That, that was the first time I'd actually heard the clip. And the context is there plain as day because you can hear people laughing at it, right? It is a comedian telling a joke on a comedy program. So that's the context. It is clearly a joke within that context. Intent. Do we honestly think that Joe Brown wants us to throw acid on politicians' faces? If you actually believe that, you are mi willfully, in my opinion, misunderstanding uh, w what a joke is. Um, so, so uh, I I, I think the intent there was to have a laugh. Comedian's jobs, uh, a George Carran comedian once said that it's a comedian's job to find where the line that you shouldn't cross is and then gently step over it. I think we're in a, we're, we're, we're heading into this rather puritanical age where most comedians these days feel that they have to stay a couple of meters behind that line. Comedy is about hyperbole, irony, um, shock sometimes. Um, but uh, I, I think we're, this is a dangerous President, when the Prime Minister is getting involved, uh, having a pop at the BBC for telling jokes on a comedy programme, I find it absolutely bizarre. It, it wasn't clearly an incitement of hatred. I, I wonder whether Nigel Farage is kind of um, uh, trolling us a little bit and having a pop really at the, at the snowflake left, because it's normally quite often the left that are going, uh, you know, we need to watch ourselves with our language uh, more so than the right. But uh, I, I'm a big believer in free speech generally, but certainly within this particular context it was clearly a joke if you didn't like it switch off and don't watch joe brand again so, simple so as that done. yeah simple as that if you don't like it switch off interesting that he wonders if nigel farage is being serious he made a very good point you don't often hear people on the right uh, demanding that people be sanctioned or dismissed because of something they said now, most people on the right spend most of their time complaining that it is them being attacked for saying things while people on the left get away with it. So this is a, an interesting kind of flip-flop here. David Vance came back on that point. Yet, by the same token, we've had in the past 12 months a couple of quite, quite famous cases. We had a, a Scottish comedian called Mark Meachin, who mm -hmm. otherwise operated under the name Count Dankula, who taught his pug to make Nazi salutes. On the basis of that, he was pr uh, prosecuted by the police. He was fined. The yep. media weighed heavily against him. I know. We've had a UKIP can if, I just, if I just finish, we've had a UKIP candidate in the form of Carl Benjamin trolled mercilessly by the media over a joke that he made three years ago. So, I mean, again, where's the, where's the consistency? I, okay for Joe Brand, not okay for, for uh, Carl Benjamin, not okay for Mark yeah, but David. Well, well, I, well, I would say this, if I may, that 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 I I have defended uh, Marcus Meachin quite publicly before. Um, he was prosecuted for what is clearly a joke, and the yeah. the judge in that particular case that said that context and intent wasn't relevant. Um, I don't agree with those two people's politics in any way, shape, or form. And I do think with the Carl Benjamin case, he was running for office, and therefore you should uh, hold yourself to a higher standard than a comedian is. Um, so uh, yes, there there is hypocrisy and double standards. But I do think in this case, as in with most of these cases, um, I'm sorry, it was a joke. Um, and if you were offended, and just because you're offended doesn't mean you're right. Um, you know, if you're genuinely offended about it, like I say, switch off. Just switch off, eh? Just switch off. What's going on here, I think, and again, it's not new to you. It seems like a nothing story, that, but it isn't a nothing story. It's a very serious story. It's about imposing on people 
without people even realising that it is being imposed on them, a, a new era of self-censorship. That's really what it all comes down to. When you get people petrified to say what it is they feel about anything, lest they be annihilated by the mob, the herd. And that's what it is. I won't elaborate too much on that because I've gotten into it before. And we're going to see a lot more of this going forward, I think, in the next couple of years. A lot of this. We're going to see people brought down all over the place from every part of the political spectrum. People with every different type of idea that you could possibly conceive are going to be outed and destroyed using this very method. And it really is dreadful. Nobody should support the firing of Danny Baker for posting that picture because you'd have to be stupid to think that Baker willfully and knowingly tweeted the chimp on the day that a mixed race woman gave birth. Baker's not thick. He would have known if he'd realised it that he would have been in serious trouble. Brand made a gag in a controversial talk uh, panel show on BBC Radio 4 that she said it's just a fantasy because her politics are, well, they're obviously well known, I don't know, that she's a lefty or a Labour supporter, I have no idea. So she obviously doesn't like Nigel Farage or Johnson or Reese Mogg or any of the rest of them. So I'd rather use battery acid than, than, than milkshake. Is you, you, you cannot make a logical argument that it, it is incitement or that it is dangerous, or that it could lead to somebody using battery acid. All right? It's ridiculous. It's 28 minutes to the top of the hour. It is the 13th, Thursday the 13th, um, and it is the Richie Allen Show. We've got David Bowie lined up. When we hear from David Bowie, the Duke, we'll come back and we'll go, we'll, we'll talk about Julian Assange for a little bit, and then we'll talk about bakeries, not baking cakes for transgender people. Funny story in the United States that I came across. So here's the Duke himself. I know the Duke is John Wayne, I know that. I'm just being lazy today. This is the Richie Allen Show, Europe's most listened to independent radio show, Fab Radio 2, TriggerWarning.tv and my website. Back in a couple of minutes. We're certain to succeed. What a line that is. If my love is your love, we're certain to succeed. Bowie and absolute beginners on the Richie Allen Show. Loads of tweets. Paul tweets on the Dominic Waghorn incident. It's an incident, I think. Dominic Waghorn, Sky's diplomatic editor, said in a report about the alleged attack on two tankers in the Gulf of Oman. What did he say, Waghorn? He said... There are a couple of theories. He said one is that it's a false flag attack by the enemies of Iran to blame it on Iran. That was quite surprising, to say the least. Paul tweets, Paul Alawi says, maybe Waghorn's use of the term is to normalise it, thus taking it out of the hands of those who question it. Like you say, Murdoch is insidious. We know he has an interest in the Golan Heights, unless, like you say, Waghorn has gone all Peter Finch in network, yeah. You might be right, Paul. Either way, Matt, how you doing, Matt? Nice to hear from you. Loads of tweets. I've missed loads there now. Lovely jubbly. Let's move on. I've had another 40 on tweets there, haven't I? Right. I'm missing out on conversations going on here. Dean says, my wife has thrown some shit at me. You name it. But battery acid would be refreshing. <laughs> it beats bricks and hairbrushes and frying pans. Ooh, the hard love, says Dean. In response, Faisal tweets, Now you see, that sounds more like a harmless joke to me. A bit of battery acid would make a nice change. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting times. These are interesting times. I did John Stott... Richie, so many people take offence at just about anything these days, whether it's genuine attention-seeking or virtue signalling. It's all become white noise to me. Really, says John. Thank you, John. And you know how to tweet me. It's at Richie Allen Show on Twitter. Patricia says, I take offence to people who take offence to statements made in humour. 
Sometimes in today's world, laughter is the only escape to the BS going on, in my opinion, says uh, Patricia. Yes, undoubtedly. Mr. Shin says, if the right said something like Joe Brand did, then the left would be jumping up and down screaming about the murder of Joe Cox. It's double standards. You are right, of course. You are absolutely correct to say that. What the right needs to do is just point that very thing out, not to call for police intervention on Joe Brand. That's silly. I agree with you there, Mr. Shin. Completely. They need to point out the glaring contradiction, the glaring hypocrisy, but also say, look, we we stand by the right of Joe Brand to say whatever Joe Brand wants to say. Simple as that. It's just the old divide and conquer bollocks again, isn't it? Saji Javid is the Home Secretary. He's an awful person. He's a dreadful human being. He's taken great pleasure in signing a request for Julian Assange to be extradited to the United States. Javid is worthless, isn't he? What a gutless piece of human excrement he is. Taking great pleasure in signing the extradition request for Julian Assange to go to the United States where he has committed no crimes. I'm not saying he's, com- not saying he's committed crimes anywhere at all. I'm saying the United States has no right to extradite him because he hasn't committed any crimes against that country. Here is Sajid Javid speaking on the BBC Radio 4 Today programme earlier this morning on Assange. Uh, yes, and so, the, yeah, uh, first of all, I'm you know, very pleased that the police were finally able to apprehend him. and now- Very pleased he is. Now he's rightly behind bars because he broke UK... Rightly behind bars. UK law. Uh, there's an extradition request uh, from uh, the US that is uh, before the courts tomorrow. Uh, but yesterday, you know, I signed the extradition order and certified it, and that will be going in front of the courts uh, tomorrow. You would like... Bet you were proud of yourself when you did that, you baldy bastard. All right, pot kettle. I, I get it, I get it. I'd like to see him extradited to the United States. Well, I uh, uh, should be careful. It's a decision ultimately for the courts, but there is a very important part of it for the Home Secretary. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a decision for the courts, but if you didn't sign the order, you odious, cretinous little man, there wouldn't be any courts. Secretary, and I want to see justice done at all times, and we've got a legitimate extradition request, so I've signed it, but the final decision is now with the courts. The UK... U.S. extradition treaty is a disgrace to those U.K. politicians who negotiated it in the past. If the United Kingdom wants to extradite a U.S. citizen to face justice over here, the United States will make the U.K. jump through a 1,500 hoops. The U.K. would have to present evidence of a crime, hard evidence, that would stand up in a court of law to the US before the US would even consider it. You might be surprised to learn, you might not, that it isn't reciprocated. All the United States has to do is ask the UK, is ask us, can you take Jimmy Smith over there? Can you put him on a plane and send him to the US? All we do is say, why is that? Do you think he committed a crime? And then we send him over. That's about the size of it, really. Here's RT reporter Shadia edwards Dashti. Shadia edwards Dashti, following this for RT. Well, of course, it must be noted that the final decision is for the courts and the courts alone, regardless of what Sajid Javid has said today. But, of course, the United States has indicted Julian Assange for 17 counts under the Espionage Act for spying and publishing classified military and diplomatic publications, all related to the war in Iraq and the war in Afghanistan. Of course, another one is for conspiracy and to hack a government computer to publish these secret documents. Now, if convicted, Julian Assange could face up to 175 years behind bars. Now, indeed, the WikiLeaks is the organisation that Julian Assange used as a platform, and the editor-in-chief says that Julian Assange will not receive a fair trial. I don't believe that we are going to win this with legal arguments. There is no chance that Julian will get a fair trial here in the UK, or in the US, of course unless there is a change of reporting that people actually start speaking out. We're not talking about a prosecution. 
We're talking about a persecution. Yeah, those were the words read by an actor of WikiLeaks chief, Kristen Drafton. He's right. He's right. There isn't a, a snowball's chance in hell that Assange would receive a fair trial in the United States. It's a banana republic, the United States. It is a cuckolded country run from Tel Aviv with a dunce, a reality star, a reality television star poncing around the world enjoying himself, pretending to be president, living out a fantasy while neocon Zionists take their orders from Tel Aviv and execute the policies they want to uh, they want to um, they want to pursue. Not a snowball's chance in hell that he could get a fair trial in the United States. It's a fact. We'll leave that for now. It's going to run and run that, of course. There's a race row brewing as well. We'll stay with Sajid Javid for a minute, odious as he is. Javid wasn't invited to the state banquet when Trump had his state visit last week. So the Queen threw a banquet for Trump and a lot of high-profile politicians were there, but not the Home Secretary. This was put to Sajid Javid again on BBC Radio 4's Today programme this morning. I don't know. I don't know. I've asked, but I've, I haven't got a... I've just told that you know, normally Home Secretaries aren't invited, so I don't know. Really? Yeah. Many... I mean, you were the only holder of a great officer of state who wasn't invited. There were several other cabinet ministers who were. Uh, Michael Gove, mm. for example, um, Penny Mordaunt. How do you feel about not being invited? Um, I, I, I don't like it. Yeah, I, He doesn't like it one bit. Yeah, I think uh, for the reason that you just said, and uh, it is odd... Uh, I, you, know, my office did ask uh, number ten, and they said no. So uh, you'd have to ask someone from number ten why they made that decision. Um, do you think it was because of your Muslim background? No, I'm not saying that at all. I really don't know. I don't know. It could be that Theresa May doesn't like you, even though she appointed you. It could be that. It could also be that other people at the table don't like you. It could be that the Queen herself doesn't like you, doesn't like the look of you or the sound of you. And by the look of him, I don't mean his ethnic background. But maybe they just don't like you, pal, you know? Any time that I wasn't invited to something, I didn't sit around coming up with reasons of race and gender. I just thought, well, they don't like me very much. That's about the size of it. And they have good reason not to like him as well. Rich says, oh my God, not the race card, please. The race card. Cartoon Drunk says, what happens if he dies before his 170 year sentence is complete? Referring to Assange. Prop his corpse up in the cell. It is mad. It is madness, isn't it? These sentences of 300 years. and It's ridiculous, isn't it? Murray says, Labour's blind David Blunkett signed away the extradition rights of UK citizens. Maybe because he couldn't see what he was signing. Now that is politically incorrect. <laughs> but I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. <laughs> Patrick tweets, I've been listening to Scott and he reckons, uh, I don't know who Scott is, Julian Assange is a cabal operative. He's produced pictures of him freely swanning around in Belmarsh rather than solitary. Is that right? I don't know. Apparently he's not well, Assange. I don't know about that, Patrick, but I, uh, I can be convinced of otherwise. Jason tweets, you seriously have to wonder why Javid left a lucrative career in investment banking with Deutsche Bank for being an MP on about 3% of his previous salary? Good question. Yeah. Because I think, Jason, at that stage, mate, money doesn't really mean anything to them. That's what it is. There's certainly something else going on there. This is your Richie Allen show. It is Thursday. It is the 13th. Not good for an Irishman, that. The 13th. The 13th of June, 2019. Going to do one more story, maybe, and then call it a day. I will be back with you tomorrow, Friday at 9.30, with Friday's newspaper review programme. Would have had two guests today, but I don't have any download speeds. I've got, I can't download stuff. I had to plug my phone and my 4G to do my editing for the show today. It is crazy. It, it's, a, it's a madhouse here. But it's good. I've not missed the show over this yet. I've been with you every day, and I will continue to do so. So help me God. Mark Bierski was brilliant on the programme yesterday. That interview is on YouTube now. It's on iTunes, Spotify. Check it out. And tomorrow, the deadline is around about uh, lunchtime UK time. Anybody who donates to this programme before then will be in a draw for a beautiful 
Maldivite crystal pendant. It's in gold. The crystal is in gold, in solid gold. It's worth over a thousand pounds, and it's amazing. It's a lovely thing that a. It's a lovely thing for Mark uh, Bierski to do. Right. Birthday cakes and stuff. We've had this in the UK where bakers who are Christians have gotten into hot water because they've refused to put a message on a cake. We've covered this in, in, on this program in the past. There's a baker in Colorado. I'm reading from the Washington Post now. And he faces a new battle. They seem to be coming after this guy all the time as a transgender customer sues him over an order that he rejected. This guy had an other case against him dismissed by the state of Colorado back in March. Colorado baker Jack Phillips will be in court again over his refusal to prepare a transgender-themed birthday cake. How can you... What's the transgender-themed birthday cake? I've no idea. A lawyer who asked him last year to make a birthday cake symbolising her transition from male to female has sued Mr. Phillips in Denver District Court only three months after Colorado District Attorney Phil Weiser dropped the case. The man who identifies as a woman, Autumn Scardina, is seeking damages against Mr. Phillips and the Masterpiece Cake Shop for turning her down, her, in June 2017 because, um... The cake was meant to reflect her status as a transgender female, but Mr. Phillips said, no, I don't want to do that. His attorneys have argued he refused the order because he refuses to create products that violate his Christian religious beliefs, not because he refuses to serve LGBT customers. There you are. Laura Ingram covers this on Fox News last night. He was on Fox News with Laura Ingram and a lawyer called Jeremy Tedesco. So you've got Jeremy Tedesco, the presenter, Laura Ingram. But first, you will hear from Mr. Phillips, Jack Phillips, the Christian man who didn't want to make the transgender birthday cake. Yeah, this time, Laura, I really feel like I'm being harassed. I've been sued by the state twice now, and they've lost both times. And the attorney that instigated the second lawsuit against me is now taking it to... Uh, sue me personally and this time asking for damages and legal fees which would lead me to bankruptcy and and ruin my company yeah, now the, jeremy hasn't this person harassed jack over email as well and again this is now wanting a cake for to celebrate gender transition i mean uh, what does that cake look like i'm not I'm yeah not yeah i mean that. certainly it's very unfortunate to see the kind of uh, emails that were sent to jack but we can't forget the state's role in this too the state in its open hostility to jack has clearly created a lack of tolerance for people like him and now we see private individuals you know, stepping into the shoes of the state and trying to do to jack what the state couldn't do and the supreme purging, court supreme court said you cannot target people and offend their religious sensibilities in the way that they were trying to do when the first go around when it came to the cake for the same sex wedding. That's right. You know, the Supreme Court said this kind of open hostility to religion has no place in our society. And Colorado and now its citizens didn't get the message. Yeah, and Jack, Governor Jared Polis, leftist, of course governor of the state of uh, Colorado, was ultimately, you know, had to roll back this, uh, pull back this lawsuit. But basically saying the private individual involved, well, that person can go on and sue you. And that's what's happened here. Are you an object lesson? This is where Fox lets itself down all the time, over and over and over again. There's no objectivity by Fox here. They should have somebody on who supports the transgender person. They should have a bit of balance. There should be a transgender representative arguing against the gentleman who owns the bakery. And this is where Fox is dreadful. Listen to how Laura Ingram, who totally agrees with the guy who owns the bakery, listen to how she puts words in his mouth and basically makes his argument for him. This is rotten broadcasting, but it is typical of the mainstream media. And it's sad because... There's a real issue there. Listen to how Laura Ingram addresses the Christian baker 
uh, whose name is Jack Phillips. For the whole country, that if you dare to stand up for your own religious beliefs, you will be tarred, you will be demeaned, and frankly, yourself dehumanized, and they've really hurt you financially, really hurt you. Why don't you let him say that? Really hurt you. Yeah, you know, they, they really have. The state took away 40% of my business, which was my wedding business, the first go around. And the thing is, I serve everybody who comes to my shop. I welcome everybody, and I'd be glad to create cakes for anybody that comes in. But I don't create every cake and every message that people ask me to in a cake. So. And Jeremy, uh, this gardenia uh, person, this is just a, this is a mission. I mean, this is an, a mission to send a message. Don't you dare demand equal access to express your views because our views and our beliefs trump yours. You're a bigot. That's the message. Any c Christian conservative who thinks like Jack thinks is a bigot. Yeah, but you could also make the argument that you could exercise a bit of humility. You could make the argument. You see, In Graham is a dreadful presenter. I'd be saying to Jack, Jack, how are you compromising your beliefs if you make the cake? Because ultimately, if you think that a man can't ever really be a woman, and it goes against your thinking, you've got a human being standing in front of you. Why don't you just make the cake? You might remember me putting this point to Peter Tatchell. And Tatchell supports the right of the Christian baker, which is very interesting because Tatchell is obviously a gay man and he's a human rights campaigner, but he supports the right of the gay baker not to do it. And I would support the right of the gay baker not to do it, but I would be the devil's advocate. And I would say, just make the fucking cake, will you? What's the big deal, you know? Live and let live, pal. How are you? I mean, do you think God is going to punish you for making the cake? Anyway. That's what they want to say. The, the goal is to silence Jack, to banish him from public life, to financially ruin him, and to send a message of intimidation to people who share Jack's beliefs. that they. And there is some truth in that. That's the guy Tedesco, the lawyer. There is some truth in that. We talked about it earlier on with Danny Baker and Joe Brand. Yes, there is. There is a movement to destroy people and to out them as being completely unpalatable, untenable, completely outcast. Outcast these people. They can't think like that. Yes, that is absolutely true. But, you know, try and do a little bit of objective broadcasting just for once. That they have no place in public life, have no right to earn a livelihood and follow the religious con Fair enough. You know, I, I wonder if you were to go to a bakery which was owned by a gay couple or a transgender person, and if you walked in and said, please make this case, cake even case, please make this cake and ice it. And the message I want is marriage should only be between a man and a woman. I suppose the gay couple owning the bakery would probably tell you to fake off. Maybe, or maybe they just make the cake for you. Or if you walked into a transgender bakery or a bakery owned by a transgender person and said, um, please put this message on my cake. The message I want is you cannot be a woman if you have a big old cock and balls. Imagine saying that to a trans baker. Yes, use blue icing, please. Get the spelling right. You can't be a woman if you've got a big old cock and balls. How much will that be? Oh, you don't want to bake it, I see. I see. <laughs> I must be tired. It's been a long week. This. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. Listen, thanks for listening to the programme this week. Join me tomorrow morning at 9.30 UK time. Let me give a big shout out to Mark Bajerski, who's um, doing a great job um, with the work he's doing for people all over uh, Europe and around the world. And thanks to him for raising money for the Richie Allen Show. He's um, going to send me the, because money has been coming into his account and he sent it on to me for the draw tomorrow for this beautiful Maldivite pendant in gold, in solid gold. Big shout out to Mark for doing that. I will, I will make uh, a draw tomorrow and we will post the winner on Twitter and on Facebook. Mark will post it on YouTube as well and then he will send out the pendant to the winner. He's a great guy, Mark Bajerski. His website is markbajerski.com, B-A-J-E-R-S-K-I. MarkBajerski.com, one of the nicest people I've had the good fortune to meet in my uh, independent media journey or career. Thanks for listening to the show today. Do join me on YouTube tomorrow morning at 9.30. I'd love to have you there. We'll have a look at Friday's papers and we might have a few giggles as well, all right? So I'm going to leave you with Morrissey. This is one of my favourite songs of all time, by the way. From the Vauxhall and I album. 
of 94, I think. I should know. Bye for now. See you tomorrow. Bye.